lovely people. It has been a minute. I think that's now my new opener. It has been a minute, just constantly minutes. But hi, it is fall now, as I have so deemed, because it's September and I don't care no more. And also too, like it's finally cooling down. Like the mornings are actually chilly here in Portland. So I feel like my life has come back to me a little bit more. But beyond all that, I wanted to sit here today and talk with you guys about ancestor work, how my personal stuff on that has changed a little bit, thanks to the wonderful world of TikTok, amazingly enough, and also then just polish up some of the jewelry that I've been handed down over the years. So I've got some Brasso here, we're just gonna, you know, polish here or there. All of this is costume jewelry, none of this is worth anything. Um, I'm pretty sure my father and my mother have held those hostage for me and my sister for the time being. But some of the stuff is also like things that I've been gifted from relatives, stuff they used to own before they passed. It's a bunch. I have a, so much jewelry and things. Like there's some things like this cute little doo doo doo. And I never wear any of it. So I kind of just cycle through the same pieces a lot. Um, this is an old choker that used to have some roses on it. Some of them have fallen off here though, so I don't really know what I'll do with that. As I pull all this out, grab a lovely cup of coffee. This might be a little chatty and long, but I uh, used to have a very firm stance with my craft in general that I don't do ancestor work. Um, there's no ancestor work that I really want to mess with at all. Any sort of ancestor veneration wasn't really my thing. Uh, and there were several reasons for that, but one of the main ones was that my ancestors were assholes. I have a video and I'll put up in the cards or in the comments down below or something. So that was always something I kind of warred with, specifically as someone who has looked into her genealogy background. Uh, I have documentations on my ancestors, where they're from, what the hell's going on. I've done the DNA test. Because of that, I had known things like there are slave owners in my family history. There are people like Miles Standish, if you don't know who that is, is the captain of the Mayflower. He was a complete asshole. Within my familial documents on like the little online thing that we all have between us all, there is a letter that someone has in some library now somewhere that is like a letter pleading of the other pilgrims, of the other Puritan pilgrims coming in and being like, he's starting shit with the natives, take him back England. And England said no. So not the best individuals, just in general. And it's like, okay, well then I don't want to work with those types. Of, like, why would I want to invite that energy into my craft? And I kind of stuck really firmly with that for a while until I stumbled upon, upon, upon speak, several different TikToks and talking about ancestor work. Um, and it was kind of a collection of them. I wish I could like remember so I can quote people properly, but this is like over several times, what, what have you. Ooh, this is pretty. That's been a pin for my grandmother. No rose, all middle, and just like attached on the back there. But along with all that, I stumbled upon a couple TikToks that like kind of clearly was like in the same realm of stuff. And again, and again, and again came up the concept that, hey, if you're already looking into your history and then trying to maybe do better than your ancestors did, combat what they were doing, uh, act in any way different, then you are doing ancestor work. That is a type of ancestor work. And I was like, hmm, okay, that's intriguing. I, I, I could see that, right? It's me looking into how my specific relatives in the past have possibly done some fuckery and how I am very much like, well, that's not me and I refuse to continue the fuckery. We will be doing different. We will be attempting to leave the world better than we found it, not worse, um, to least to the best of our ability and with what is limited to us as individuals. And so I kind of vibed with that for a little while. Uh, and then also along with that is I think the concept too of engaging with ancestor work and having it be a very worshipful situation. I and This is an association I had for a while because of probably like leftovers from some Christian puritanical nonsense just in culture. Even though I did not grow up a Christian at all in the slightest, um, my parents were already pretty much into the new age woo by the time I was born. And so we kind of went to church 
randomly it's like my mom thought we might need this community because she grew up in the south and then very quickly realized we don't want that community yeah i just never really grew up with that as like deeply ingrained as other people do like i don't think i have any sort of re re religious trauma associated with that per se lost the train of thought it's just gone the thought is gone ah. oh the whole concept of worshiping your ancestors as something to be honored always and the, the idea that they could be assholes or the fact that even the ones I knew have lived this whole life that I know nothing about, right? I am coming at them from the perspective as their grandchild, great-grandchild. There is an instinct for us to naturally want to have a positive association with our ancestors. And when you go through and like kind of read some of the stories, maybe if you have access to any of that, like that in itself is a privilege. Like I have the wonderful privilege that my parents did a lot, specifically my mother did a lot of ancestry look into. And we had a running joke that like every other, like it seemed to like skip, what was it? Three generations it was going on where she was like really heavily into it. It seemed like one, two, three, asshole. One, two, three, asshole. And like in severe ways, like not a good human. Um, one guy like faked his own death in the war and then like got a whole new wife. And then when he died, the, the both wives came to collect the death benefit <laughs> and it was a problem. So there's a little bit of that level of, I don't necessarily wanna honor or worship imperfect people. We don't wanna elevate you to this level of, oh, the ancestors, they knew so much. No, they didn't. They were people living a life, making mistakes, doing the things. But then why can't we honor them for what they've done? Is something that has keep now coming up again and again and again. Oh, well, this is a cute little watch from my grandmother. Most of these are from my grandmother or my great grandmother, all on my dad's side because my mom's parents are very much alive. And the only thing I have from my great grandparents on my mom's side is an antique coffee. Um, I guess not antique. Well, yeah, antique. It's the old. It's like the old, like Middle Eastern coffee thing. How you make coffee with that. They gave it to me, which was awesome of them. I love them very much for that. I saw it in like storage one day and I was like, can I have this? Like, yeah, that was your Dede's. Um, Dede in Armenian means great grandfather, means grandfather, but we all refer to our great grandfather, all the cousins as Dede. It's just like easier or something. I don't know. And we got more crystal things that my grandmother made. Very much, I wonder, like, is, the problem is with all these, I don't know, are these citrine? Like, what are, like, it's got a little yellow in it. Could be just dirty clear quartz or something, I don't know. Let's see if this is gonna focus. But, there we are. Apparently my grandmother made a bunch of these, all these little crystal things everywhere. And then we have pretty little green glass gem here. Little pearl attached. Very nice. So yeah, the idea of like, oh, hey, maybe my ancestors were imperfect people. Like, let's just honor them there. But thank you for getting me this far. Thank you for, you know, the steps that you did take did allow me to make certain advancements. And what's wrong with honoring that part of it, I guess, too. I also think there is a level, um, which I had to kind of remind myself of. I think I got too hung up on the asshole thing and not enough hung up on the ancestors that were out there doing good, right? Like just because I am a person who clearly came from enough privilege that people were able to do some horrid things. One bad person in the line doesn't mean the entire line is bad and doesn't mean that there weren't other people like me up in the line doing what they could in the time they had with what they were given to make the world a better place. And maybe you haven't heard about them because, you know, sometimes people just don't report good things. This is not an ancestor piece. This is a piece of a bracelet that I found on the floor of a bar in San Francisco. <laughs> the things you find. This old Celtic knot, you can tell it's like been bent all hell. Uh, this used to be my dad's. I'm pretty sure I just janked it once when I was 16 and be like, that's mine now. Even if I don't know their names, even if I don't know necessarily who they are or what, um, wonders they did maybe it was very minor maybe they just helped one person it could never be talked about because of whatever the fuck was going on at the time you know don't not assuming that everyone is bad or everyone like went through some shit and what, what things am i completely disregarding like what things i think that's part of it too it, it kind of makes me in a little way feel guilty that like i was like looking at one ancestor and then blaming all of them for that one ancestor's bullshit basically right like oh, it's not their fault you know, that could have been their great, great, great grandfather, their father, their whatever, you know, they were dealing with them. And so I kind of, I like the idea of one, using 
jewelry and such that has been handed down and or just like you know these are always like fun i jewelry is such a fun adornment and it's also like one of my favorite ways to uh use witchcraft on myself that is always very subtle i love to bless little pieces um cleanse them re-bless them again and i always kind of wonder with my grandmother specifically being woo but then on top of it too there is uh, other my great grandmother with some catholicism like i definitely have some of her this is one that i found in her collection she had a couple of them but this is one of her crucifixes and like with the black beads and everything it's just so pretty and like she was very much a uh, devout catholic from what i can assume definitely a uh, roman catholic very italian although she grew up in France and then she went to New Orleans and she came to Chicago. She had a life. Like this is just so beautiful and even though like this does not hold any sort of religious significance to me, the ancestral significance of this being my great grandmother, I had the pleasure of actually knowing her. Um, she lived to be 98. And so having something of hers that she probably used in like a spiritual way, it, as like a way of like honoring her even if it's kept separate from all of my stuff i know i'm still kind of playing with the idea of like oh this could be of like a, a gratitude and a thing towards her and uh, her lessons and things like that but also too i might want to keep it separate from maybe the rest of my altars i'm i'm debating basically setting up a little ancestral altar not as a place of worship or veneration per se but just as a place of gratitude i guess as well and i think that one of the other things that always held me up about ancestor work was the concept of spirits or ghosts and i think at the time because back then still i'm now like five six years in my craft when it comes to ghosts and otherworldly things things reaching through the veil etc and so forth well i've had weird off experiences things i can't 100 percent necessarily explain but maybe it could logic away like it's it's that teeter mm. i didn't want to invite by doing any sort of like ancestor work invite in uh spirits or even if they were my relatives uh i was not ready for that i was like listen i'm already dealing with some deities and some weird meditations and dreams and i don't i cannot deal with inviting any anything else into my life right now whereas now because i'm more settled in my craft and overall um if i have an experience then okay cool like it, i don't think it would freak me out as much but also too i don't think i'm necessarily inviting them to do that there's a difference between calling on your ancestors to say work some magic which i don't know if any of them would be vibing with you know what my grandmother would be she'd be down for it she'd be like yes little miss woo woo queen would have had a fantastic time getting involved with some blessings some protection some love she'd be all for it all for it she would be so dang happy about it um but also too i think there's an I guess an interesting concept then when it com comes into calling an ancestor, anyone in the comments down below, if you do call an ancestors, uh, is this a concern of yours or are you less worried about it? I do worry at times, one of the reasons I never wanted to call on them before was the idea of my ancestors having different intentions as me. And if I'm calling them in, no matter how I want to direct that intention specifically, you know, for my own purposes, I always did worry. I was like, well, who's to say that they can't suddenly get in there and decide no we're gonna direct it a different way good analogy i guess would be when people buy you gifts in the family right and they know you but they don't know know you and like one of the reasons i don't really appreciate gifts so much at all from anybody is i'm a very practical person and when it comes to my fri frivolousness my frivolity frivolity is that a word uh, I am very specific about it, about certain things that I want. I'm very particular about those things. And then I have this whole, when people get me things that I don't necessarily want or don't fit exactly how I would like them to in my life, I then I'm staring at them and I feel guilty for not feeling grat gratitude for it. But honestly, it ends up being a thing like I just really didn't want. And I wonder if that same thing would happen if you called in your ancestors in to help you. Their intention is necessarily gonna be your intention and maybe they might look at you and I'm sorry, but anyone else have a relative at some point decide that they know something better than you, regardless of how many times you tell them, no, I want it this way. And I think that comes in with the whole 
like not honoring an ancestor is above and beyond it's very much as i do see them as flawed human beings and even though if i can appreciate that i'm assuming they're still slightly flawed in the afterlife to some extent if our consciousness does continue our consciousness i do believe is a flawed entity that has to learn through experience most times so like them in involving themselves in my spell and deciding, no, you don't want that type of person. You want this type of person to say, enter into your life as a romantic partner or no, 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 no. You don't need protection from that. You need protection from this. Is there a, like anyone else worry about ancestors fucking with their shit if they're called in or at all being dealt with with so many different things of that nature? You know what I mean? I don't, that is something I worry about. So it's like, I like the idea of Maybe having an ancestral altar, having something that is sweet and nice and makes you think positively of the ancestors or the relatives I did know personally or the ancestors whose stories have always been told to me, um, you know, give them honor and a little bit of gratitude for getting our family where it was today. I'm very interested. I think I'm still very much exploring it. I haven't entirely settled on one thing or another per se of like how exactly I want to go about it especially says as you can tell I'm kind of just like talking this stuff through this chain is very dirty Look. anyway I'm going to continue cleaning these and then I will see you guys in the next one maybe I'll even film another video while I do the rest of this but talk to you later bye bye